if you've seen her wheel before. All right, let's do them inside.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it is a good morning. No rain today. Yeah. Yeah. We call one another to the act and attitude of worship. Please join with me. Beloved, we are gathered to give witness to the enduring realities of life. We have come to affirm that life is a gift, that the gift is good, and that it comes from God. We are gathered to renew our hope in Jesus Christ as we travel life's long journey. We find God in the paths of our present and our past, and we trust in God's love for our future. For the same God guides us all the way, every day of our lives and beyond life. Let us praise, praise God, God with our whole hearts and entrust our lives to God's hands. Amen. Now we sing a hymn of praise, hymn number 86, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Rise and sing unto the Lord, friends. And friends, you may be seated. Good morning, one and all. It is June the 11th. It is the second Sunday after Pentecost. It is, at long last, a beautiful day here in New Hampshire. And it is, in fact, the day that the Lord has made. It is our Sabbath, our time to come to worship the Lord together in spirit and truth. And I welcome you here for that purpose 
at East Congregational United Church of Christ here in Concord, New Hampshire. It is great that you are all with us. As I look out on the congregation, I am grateful after our busy day yesterday that you got up and came to church this morning and uh, uh, that we're all here together to celebrate in the presence of the Lord. like also to welcome uh, all of you folks who have joined us today uh, online via Facebook Live and, and on YouTube. It is great that we can worship together from wherever we are. It is indeed a beautiful day. We've got, a, I think, a wonderful service, lots of great music here today. And, but it, we are going to begin by making the transition from everything else, from being out there to being so busy, to coming in here to this place of quiet and this place of, of praise and celebration by opening our hearts and lifting our voices together in the spirit of prayer. Will you join with me now? Ever-present God, you who are forever seeking us and always teaching us, as we gather for worship this morning, open our minds to the truth of your care. Open our hearts to the gentle caress of your love. Open our lips to share stories of faith. Open our hands that we might create beauty, do justice, and show kindness. Open our souls to the breath of your spirit and open our mouths to sing boldly and loudly your praises. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for this beautiful day, for the, the joy after so many days of rain and showers of waking up the, to see the sun shining brightly in our midst. Thank you that spring is giving way to summer. Thank you that you have gathered us together in so many ways to be your church, to be a part of your community of faith and love. Hear us as we pray, our, give our praises unto you. Help us that your spirit might move in and through our lives. And hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. friends and since in fact we have some kids with us today why don't you come on down once again Jocelyn thanks for coming down Amelia well hello Sylvie how you doing I'm so glad you guys are here this is a great day uh, uh, I want to thank you, first of all, Jocelyn, for lighting the candles this morning. You know, that, to me, when you guys come down and you light the candles for us, it starts everything off right. And makes me very happy to see that, because I know you've done that a lot, Amelia. Also, I want to thank Amelia for being here yesterday during the yard sale and doing all the work that she did. And uh, so it was a great day yesterday, but it's a great day today. And the reason is, in a little bit, we're going to tell, or Chris is going to tell a little bit of the story of a man in the Bible whose name was Abraham. 
Now, I'm not going to spoil what the story is today, but I will tell you this much. God said to Abraham, you are going to be the father of a great, great nation. Your offspring, well, there are going to be a lot of offspring. How many uh, children, offspring, kids, do you think Abraham is going to have? Any guesses? Two, three? You don't know what that even means. Okay. Well, that's why I'm here, Jocelyn. When we say the kids, it means like many children. Like how many children are there in a family? Uh, Scott and Sarah have one little girl, Sarah. You might have in your family uh, um, brothers and sisters. Sometimes families can be small. Sometimes they can be very big. But, you know, and I've heard of families sometimes that will have as many as eight or nine or ten kids. Not very often, but that's a lot of little kids running around a house, isn't it? And but let me tell you something. What God said to Abraham, he said, your kids... Your children are as going to be as many as the stars in the sky or as many as the grains of sand on the beach. That's a whole lot of kids. Can you imagine counting all the stars in the sky and each one of those stars was somebody like Sylvie? Mama, Mama's looking horrified here. <laughs> That's right. That was. And of course... And I think what God wanted Abraham to know is that all of us who follow God, all of us are like the children of Abraham. And in fact, there's a song. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. You guys know that, right? Let's, let's sing this. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. All right. Could you give me a hand with something, guys? Could you come up here with me? Okay. Could you turn towards the congregation? And we need you guys to help us with singing. We're going to do kind of an edited version of this, but we're going to try to do it. All right. Now, at the end of the song, I'm going to go right hand. I want you to take your hand and do this. Okay? Can you do that? All right. All right. At the end of the song, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, right arm, right arm. Very good. Okay. Now, don't be afraid here just to, to letter it. We're going to, this is kind of our little dance. Next one is left arm, the other arm. Okay. All right. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right arm, left arm. You guys are doing that pretty well. I, I'm you all want to come up here and face up? All right. Next time, next one is your right foot. Okay. Can you do that? We'll do all three, right? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot. <laughs> and the next one, guess what? It's this one. Okay? All right? You ready? You sure you can do this now? I have every confidence. You sure you can do this? I know. You've done this with me before. So let's, let's just try this one. Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. Okay, and the next one, this might be tough for you guys, but, you know, however the spirit moves, turn around. Don't get dizzy, don't fall down, but turn around. All right. 
for being here, but before we go, i got to sing in a minute, so i got to catch my breath. <laughs> Let's say a prayer together. Let's fold our hands. Let's bow our heads. Let's say a prayer together, and I will give you the words. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for making me, for making me one, of your children. one of your children. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much once again, guys, and we'll talk to you later. Bye, Sylvie. <coughs> I think so. <laughs>
Today's reading is from Genesis, chapter 12, verse 1 through 9. I want to make a brief note before I begin. You heard Reverend Lowry refer to Abraham. This scripture refers to Abram. It's the same person. Further on, beyond this scripture, God changes his name from Abram to Abraham and his wife from Sarai to Sarah. So you're hearing the same person, just a different pronunciation. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and all the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set out to go to the land of Canaan, When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Sechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. From there he moved up to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negreb. And so in today's scripture. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, choir. By the way, um, this is sort of the closing day of the season uh, for our East Church choir, and it, I think it, uh, we need to just take a moment to say thank you uh, to Susan and, and these three ladies for the music they bring to our midst every single Sunday. Would you give them a round of applause for me, please? I feel privileged I get to sing with them, out of breath or not. So, uh, And you should know that the flowers on the altar this morning, these beautiful roses, are in honor of our East Church Choir. So thank you for those. And um, we are continuing this morning our little summer sermon series that I'm calling The Old, Old Story, Tales from the Book of Genesis. And we're just going to kind of take a survey of of some of the great stories and some of the great characters that are found in this first book of the Bible. And as you may have, certainly have already guessed, today we're going to talk about Abraham, Abram, soon to be Abraham, and uh, the story of his call from God, from Genesis 12. Will you pray with me now? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. You who are and who continue to be today, tomorrow, from season to changing season, from age to age the same, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. To begin with, friends, Don't let the simplicity 
of the story fool you. I know, compared with so many other of the stories contained in the book of Genesis, such as, for instance, the creation story that we read in its entirety last Sunday, our text for this morning, the one that Chris just shared with us, is relatively and decidedly short and to the point. Really, just four verses with a little bit of additional commentary. Basically, what we are told here in this text is that God said to Abram, go. And Abram, well, he went. But of course, as you can imagine, there's much, much more to this story than that. In fact, it has been said that this handful of verses from the 12th chapter of Genesis represent, quote, the pivot on which all of history turns, unquote. In that, up until this point, the biblical story is really all about the universal story of our humanity in the sight of God. It, it regards humanity's very creation and, yes, its subsequent fall from grace. The first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, which, by the way, is referred uh, to by biblical scholars as primeval history, this is actually the story of how God's beloved creation went from being a people in paradise to a scattered multitude that was filled with corruption, incivility, violence, and sin. And when you read through those chapters, up until this point, what God has pretty much been doing is reacting, reacting to all these misbegotten human choices. Ah, but now, you see, at last, you might say, what we encounter is a God who acts. Genesis now becomes this very specific story of God's effort to lead his people back. It's the start of the whole history of a great nation called Israel. It is the beginning of a story of divine salvation that has its culmination in Jesus Christ. And the beauty part of it, the beauty part is that all of it hinges on the response of one rather obscure 75-year-old man who, truth be told, was very gladly headed toward his retirement years. This is a man who had worked his father's land for pretty much all his life and, and honestly didn't have much to show for it. Now, the thing about this particular tale is that traditionally, we do tend to portray Abram, or Abraham, as he's known later on, as Chris shared with us. We tend to paint a picture of him in, well, very heroic terms, do we not? The brave man who boldly answers God's call to a far country. A man who sets out on a journey to the unknown while waving farewell to kith and kin, all for the sake of this noble quest for a great nation and a blessing that would not only extend to him and his future heirs, but also to all the families of the earth. Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. And when we read the story that way, got to tell you, it feels to us like the stuff of great adventure. It's Homer's Odyssey. It's the Lord of the Rings. It's Star Trek, all rolled up in one. Hey, he was boldly going where no one had gone before. But ultimately, you see, this doesn't really tell the story. For look closely at this story. And what you have here, particularly as we end up going beyond this text for this morning, is a long and protracted narrative of an elderly nomad out in the wilderness with no prospects, no heirs, no land to speak of, save for a small patch of scrub brush that his late father had left him. Moreover, you'll notice that there are no details given in God's call as to exactly what direction Abram was supposed to go, be it to Canaan or the hill country of Bethel or any other predetermined site. 
nor is there any kind of prospectus or timeline provided as to when and how this great nation's status was to occur. There are no blanket assurances given in these verses that everything is always going to be safe and secure and stable along the way. All we've got, really, is God's emphatic call for Abram to go. In the original Hebrew, lech lecha, which literally translates as go, you. Go, just go. And amazingly, what we read here is that Abram went, as the Lord had told him, with his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot in tow. By the way, it's funny what things you learn on the internet. This morning, I am not kidding here, I opened up uh, my Facebook account briefly this morning and I found this lesson that Abraham was in fact the smartest person in the world. And how we know that is he knew a lot. I know that takes a minute. but <laughs> Kind of ruined the whole spirit of the sermon. But anyway, he went with Sarai and his nephew Lot and he went seemingly blindly towards the land of Canaan. This, you see, is what marks the beginning of an epic tale. That Abram heard God's call, along with God's promise of great blessing, and he believed it. Now, needless to say, this all didn't happen overnight, for that matter, as, as you read forward, you find this didn't happen over the course of a lifetime. As this story unfolds in Genesis, we will find out that the journey of Abraham and Sarah was indeed fraught with, shall we say, bumps in the road. Turned out that Canaan was not the final destination. The whole time they were there, they lived like strangers in a foreign country, as Chris mentioned, living in tents, always ready to move. There were years of famine spent in Egypt, during which time Abram sought to pass off Sarah as his sister rather than his wife to save his own skin. Eventually, we're told that Lot went off on his own to do his own thing, which also led to some amount of strife in the family. What's more, there was political and social intrigue in spades. And then, then of course, there was this whole matter of Abram's promised descendants being as many as the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the beach, which was very interesting because by this time, Abram was 100 years old and Sarai was 90 and they still, at this point, didn't have any children. More on that next Sunday. <laughs> Suffice to say that it was enough for even the most stalwart follower of God at some point, just to throw in the towel and say, Oy vey, enough already, enough. But here's the point, and here's the good news of this story. Abram and Sarai held fast to the promise. No, it wasn't happening in the way or on the schedule they would have wanted. And they could have certainly done without all the problems they were still facing on the way. But, but you see, they believed in God and they understood that God's promised blessing was real. And they knew that perhaps in ways they couldn't begin to perceive or understand at the moment, those blessings were unfolding right before them. And that, just as God had promised, they themselves... We're becoming a blessing. And if you want a word for that, folks, it's faith. But what kind of faith? That's the question. The late Reverend David Steele, Presbyterian pastor and author, in a book of his entitled History, Her Story, Our Story, affirmed that most of us have a fairly clear, if somewhat mistaken, idea of what having faith looks like. 
We're pretty sure, he wrote, that if a person has faith, he's going to be pretty well off, right? She'll have a nice family. The kids are going to turn out good. But most of all, they'll feel secure. And they will know peace of mind. But, Steele went on to say, when Abram responds to God's call, this call to leave the familiar, to set off on this great adventure, he takes on new challenges, new headaches. His life becomes more complicated, less secure. He moves, you see, into the unknown. God never lets him settle down. And the Bible, the Bible calls that faith. In the end, Steele wrote, our ideas that faith means a whole lot of peace and quiet, prosperity and tranquility doesn't hold much water when we get to looking at Abraham. (laughs) Or might I add here, when it comes to looking at our own lives. You know, friends, it seems to me that we oftentimes make the mistake. No, no, wait a minute. Let, Let me rephrase that. We oftentimes have the misconception of believing that our willingness to follow God's call will immediately and automatically lead to all things good. And it will immediately and automatically lead to an abundance of blessings. Uh, Constant feelings of inner peace, you know, safety, success, prosperity. And a sense, really, that that nothing really bad is going to ever happen to you or the people you love. And and because you have faith, everything is going to turn out okay, no matter what. Which is wonderful. You know, don't get me wrong. It's, It's desirable. It's what we hope for. It's what we pray for. And in so many ways, it's true. But I'm here to tell you, and I think you'll agree, it only takes you so far when the full weight of all the world's troubles comes bearing down on your shoulders, when things are really going bad. I remember back in seminary, we were actually only had been there together for a day or two. We were at our orientation. And during this orientation, when all of us entering students were gathered together, one of our professors, who was Dr. Sixai, I believe, stood before all us new students slash wannabe new pastors, and he said to us in this rich Hungarian Hebrew accent of his, some of you will believe that your coming to seminary is going to fix your marriages, solve all your problems, and make your life trouble-free. You are mistaken. Talk about a (laughs) buzzkill. And and, and I I remember that as clear as day, and I remember thinking at the time, actually, uh, in retrospect, I think we were all thinking at the time, well, if we aren't here in anticipation of our lives being better because we've answered God's call, then what's the, the point of our even being here? Doesn't Faith equal blessing? Truth be told, as we gathered there in the chapel and Dr. Sixai said to us, I don't think any of us believed him at all. But he wasn't wrong. As we would all eventually come to learn, myself included, sometimes having that faith to follow God's call creates more challenges than what we had before. It makes for more complications, it has given us more problems than in what it has solved. It's not going to be easy to go where God is sending you. That much is made abundantly clear in the story of Abram, and so it will be for you and for me. But here's the thing, that doesn't mean you don't answer that call. It doesn't mean there aren't going to be blessings and abundance along the way. In fact, faith means that you might well be blessed so that you can become a blessing. The Reverend Dr. David Clark, who is a pastor and a preacher out of Long Beach, California, 
he writes that at the heart of God's call to Abram is this promise that God will bless Abram who will share those blessings with others. Essentially, you see, Abram is a conduit. And so it is for us, friends. This story, Clark says, reminds us that we are to be the conduits of those blessings that come to us so that we might find ways to share them. Like Abraham, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. You know, when I go back and I read this story, so often I hear the words leap of faith attached to it. You know, that Abram took a leap of faith. And I suppose that does apply to old Abram and Sarai too. Because they did drop everything to go wherever God was sending them at that moment. But you know what, truthfully? I suspect that the response was more like how you and I might have responded under the circumstances. Yeah, we might have gone. Hopefully we would have. But it would have been with a series of slow uncertain, maybe overly cautious steps, even as the journey got longer, even as life became bigger, even as the horizon spread out before them. But you see, of course, the point is, is that they went, and they went day by day, week by week, year by year, and their blessings... And the opportunity to bless unfolded as they took each and every step along the way. That's how it is for us, too. As Sarah Dillon Brewer has written, having faith is not about trying to convince yourself that you are convinced of something. You know you've got faith, she says, when However your heart is pounding as you do it, and whatever fears you happen to have, you take the next step towards that desert. Your heart will follow your feet, and you will become more fully the person that God sees as your true identity. And who knows? Maybe, think about this for a moment, maybe as your heart follows your feet, you find the opportunity to help someone else take those steps on the journey as well. Perhaps the strength and peace that you have experienced in that step-by-step relationship to the Lord ends up being something you can share with that friend, that family member who is in a place where they desperately need something solid in their life to hold on to. It could be that the the moral compass, shall we say, that you have learned to trust on your journey becomes the inspiration for other people around you who are totally confused about what is the right way to go. Perhaps those who are totally confused uncertain about their faith and what that all means. Maybe they will find inspiration in knowing those uncertain steps are the same uncertain steps you took to get where you are right now. The ways that we treat people around us, how we stand up for those who have been hurt, or maligned, or marginalized. The commitment that we have to care for the world around us. The ways that we choose to make the best use of our time, our talent, and our treasure. In all these things, and so many other ways, you and I are the conduits of the blessings we have received in such abundance. To go back to quote David Clark once again, you see, once we have received God's healing, whether that healing is spiritual, social, or physical, 
Once we have received that healing, we move from being a patient to being a physician. We find ways to let our experiences help others. We have the opportunity of raising our standard of giving back. Like Abram and Sarai before us, God has blessed us to be a blessing. Understanding, of course, that that to be a blessing requires our whole lives, our whole selves. Not just the Sunday morning at 10 a.m. part of our lives. Not simply the spiritual puzzle piece that we seek to fit into the larger jigsaw puzzle of commitments that make up our daily lives. What we hear in today's story is that Abram's answer to God's call encompassed everything in his life. And that call is extended to us in exactly the same way. It means that each one of us are to devote ourselves to taking what we are given in such abundance in this journey of our lives and letting it be transformed into opportunities for God's work to be done with and for others. It is deciding here and now to live our lives in such a way that when God says, you go, or go you, we go. Now, needless to say, if that sounds like it's going to be a long and hard journey, well, well, it is. Also unnerving at times, often inconvenient, and some right, sometimes just downright exhausting. But here's the thing we need to take with us about our going where God sends us. When you do actually step out in faith, the blessings that are revealed on that journey are only exceeded by the wonder of what happens when those blessings are shared. And what you're going to find out every single time is that it was always worth the effort that it took. The thing is, beloved, even now, God is calling us. He's calling each of you. He's calling me. And he's calling us to make that journey in the times and places of our life. He's calling. He's saying, go you. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's go. And and as we go, may our thanks be to God. Amen and amen. (laughs) And we are going to sing as our hymn 545, he leadeth me, O blessed thought. 545.
And you may be seated, friends. As we pause in the midst of our worship to pray together, I hope that uh, our prayers will be a mixture of thanksgiving for the abundance of blessings that we receive, uh, uh, prayers of celebration, uh, and, and mixed in with the prayers of intercession for those uh, around us and for in, in our own lives, for the, the challenges and uh, the difficulties we are facing in our lives and, and that are being faced in the lives of those that we love. A couple of uh, uh, pr uh, prayer requests I want to make sure I lift up to you up front. Um, we want to lift up our prayers this morning for our friend John Mintkin. And uh, uh, for those who had not heard or were not there yesterday, John was here helping us uh, with the yard sale, came very early, and uh, was out here in the back helping, uh, helping out. And basically, he collapsed, he passed out, and we had to, uh, uh, we had to call uh, the, the ambulance to come, the EMTs from Concord, who I give all wonderful credit in the world for their, their caring acts, came in, uh, 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 Dee was there to help, thanks be to God that Dee, you were there to help out with, with John. Um, long story short, uh, he woke up, immediately said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, but it, the first the ambulance said, okay, we're gonna take you in the ambulance and assess. And though everything seemed to be okay, they decided the wisest course of action was to take him down to Concord Hospital uh, for observation. And they did choose to keep him overnight. And things are going pretty well. Gail uh, um, stopped in before church to let us know uh, that he is expected to come home today. Uh, they've done a few other tests. Everything seems to be okay, but she will keep us posted. Uh, as if <laughs> Gail sent me a message yesterday to kind of update me, and her words were, everyone here except for John uh, decided he should stay overnight. And John wanted to go home, but, uh, which is actually a pretty good sign. Gail wanted me to convey her thanks to everyone who was there, uh, to Dee and to others, everybody who was there to help uh, in what was admittedly a very scary situation in the midst of everything going on. And, and interestingly enough, the ambulance, the fire truck, they're all right here. And all this time, people are milling around going, looking through the yard sale stuff. You know, it, uh, it was kind of surreal in, in that respect. So our prayers continue to be uh, with John uh, that he's home and he's going to be feeling 100% better very, very, very soon. We continue to keep our prayers with Chuck Garrigan, who is recovering, and day by day, week by week, seems to be doing a little bit better, and we're very grateful for that. And Jackie, is, Jackie who is a nurse herself, is supervising the situation, and uh, uh, we're very happy about that. And I've got a lot of prayers of celebration that have been passed on my way. First of all, let's pray for all of the graduates. This is graduation season right now. Concord, Merrimack Valley, Bow, Pembroke, and so many others around. And uh, for all these young people in high school who are graduating and setting out on the next phase of their lives, our prayers go with them. Also, uh, we pray, uh, uh, Kathy Radel uh, contacted us this morning and wanted to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving and celebration. She, by the way, won the raffle uh, for Bob's table uh, yesterday. And, um, and here's the thing she wanted to know. She thought that was a wonderful thing because she never put a ticket in the, in the jar. <laughs> Somebody else did that for her. And she wants to say a prayer. She's so happy, so thrilled, and wanted to let us know and to say thank you for whoever that was and to thank God for, uh, for that, that victory, if you will, winning the raffle. So thanks to her. Also, on a personal note, uh, I would like to pray a prayer of celebration for my mother, Sylvia Lowry, who is up at uh, Assisted Living uh, Colonial uh, up in Lincoln, Maine. Her birthday was yesterday, and, uh, uh, and we're going to have a conversation later with her t later on today. But uh, I did want to say, because I know she is one of our stalwart members of the online congregation, mm -hmm. folks. And I wanted to say happy birthday, Mom, and uh, I'm glad that you're 29 years old today and, uh, and that uh, we're, uh, uh, we are celebrating all of us here at East Church with you. So uh, best wishes. We pray also for um, 
the members of our congregation, our extended family, who may not be here in the sanctuary, but who are certainly with us as members of our church family. Ray Edmonds, Maxine Brewster, Sally Gibbs, and so many others. And uh, I don't want to ask for your request too, but just briefly, without getting into it too deeply, because I don't think that's necessarily helpful for us here today, but I will say it would behoove us all to pray for God's wisdom, to pray for God's healing, and pray for God's love as we pray for the heart and the soul of a nation. And I think we are in a place right now where no matter where you stand, no matter what you think, we need to pray for one another and for this country and for this world. So um, let's just leave it at that. Anyone else have a prayer request this morning? Yes, ma'am. Never mind. Never mind, okay. <laughs> I, well, I just, God's really laid on my heart lately that children, and yesterday, I mean, it's a cute story, but it's something that we really need to take serious. We had Amelia here yesterday, and she was just having the time of her life, and so many of you made such a, a big deal about how much help she was and everything. And at the end of the day, I heard that she wants to be a trustee someday. And I just thought that was so sweet, but also it broke my heart because working with children for so long, we're in a time in our society where so many of our children don't even know what a church is. And I, I guess God just laid on my heart to pray, <clears throat> sorry, to pray for children and for something to shake up parents and get their children back in churches again. I think there, our kids need the kind of education and nurture uh, that we as Christians, that's, we are blessed. We can be a blessing to other in that up to and including uh, the children of our lives. Thanks, Lisa. Anyone else? Yes, Kathy. I'd like us to remember the first responders because it's not always safe out there for them the way our world is now. Yep. Um, and we also need to think of military. They do a lot for us here in, in America and beyond our borders. But, you know, we wish them <coughs> Absolutely. Safety, safety and wisdom. Absolutely, in, in these times. And as far as first responders go, we saw that in glorious fashion yesterday. You know, how uh, I was just so touched by how normal they made everything and how they comforted uh, John and Gail and all of us by extension and the military for all that they do on a daily, daily, yearly basis. I saw that firsthand with first responders, the number of times they came over uh, my house to help Ray. Absolutely. Yeah. Make no mistake, it's a calling for these folks uh, who are first responders. So thank you, Kathy. Anyone else? All right, friends, let's, let's bring these prayers and all the prayers of our hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty, most merciful, ever-loving, ever-giving, ever-challenging God, you call each one of us, each in our own ways, to, to go where you are sending us, to become that blessing for others, even as each step along the way you bless us in so many, many ways. And we pray today that you would not only keep us mindful of your many blessings, but moreover, keep us ever watchful for the ways that we and pass that blessing on. Today we have prayed for those who have been in need. We pray for those who are wanting your presence and your power as they navigate the uncertain steps in their lives. But, oh God, we, we realize as we pray, so much of what we pray for is in celebration of what you have bestowed to those around us for the powers and the strength and the hope that others provide, that, that hope and power and love that comes directly from you. And we pray, O oh God, that you would help us, always help us, to be those people for others. Help us as 
persons, as a people, as a community, as a nation and a world. Help us as your disciples in this place on Mountain Road. Help us truly to love as you have loved. Help us to care as you have cared for us. Help us to offer strength in the way you have strengthened us. Help us to bestow peace and justice to others as you have extended the same to us. And help us truly be the fathers and mothers and caregivers of this nation of God's children of which we are a part. Living our lives after the manner of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sometimes the blessings we have received become blessings themselves as we give them back to God. Our morning offering will now be received. expressions of your life in us. We pray that day by day we would grow closer to all you have designed us to be, so that by our giving we might begin to change the world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you very much, and you may be seated. Well, as we close out our worship for this morning, uh, I think uh, we just have a couple of, of, of announcements, but I think first and foremost, what's on everybody's mind is, is how we did at the, the yard sale yesterday and to talk a little bit about that. Who uh, has been designated as the speaker? Step right up.
So, first and foremost, thank you to everybody. Donations. Thank you, everybody, yes. for Speak your right donations. Yep. Um, thank you to all the ladies, and perhaps some gentlemen, that help sort those donations. That takes a lot of time. Um, everybody that came to put things out, bring things in, package things up. We still got some things out there. Books through the summer. We're going to leave them in that center room. So if there's something that you find, fantastic. Um, we did also sell some of uh, Bob's goods. Um, the raffle for the coffee table was four hundred dollars. Sold a desk for two hundred. A charcuterie board. I did it um, for fifty dollars, and one of his jewelry boxes for ten. So out of the total, six hundred and sixty will go into the full award account. Um, so overall, three thousand four hundred sixty-five dollars. 660 coming out of that um, in the uh, fund drive account will be $2,805. Wow. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A round of applause is appropriate. Thank you, Julie. If you were here any time in this week, then you just know how much stuff we had. And moreover, I want to just uh, give a shout out to Chris Yellen because he was selling his creations as well. And uh, so it was, it was one of the, and we had the bake sale goods uh, as well. So we had all this stuff for sale here. Our yard sale has sort of grown to become this much bigger thing than maybe it once was. So. Uh, I just want to add my uh, words of thanks to everybody. A um, couple of things to add on to this. First of all, uh, this is the second Sunday of the month, and traditionally we have a mini bake sale, and we have bake sale items here. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, add a little bit uh, to the total and have some, some goodies for this afternoon, uh, we have that. Uh, Julie mentioned we're going to keep the books out there for a while, and uh, so if you're looking for some summer reading, Plus, we still have some clothes out there, so you know we, you know, we would allow you to do some shopping if you uh, would still like to do that. So, but once again, thanks so much to everybody who was involved in this. Um, the best part, I say this often after an event like this, but the best part was not even everything that we sold and how successful it was. It was the way that people responded to us. Uh, Kay shared with me yesterday that someone talked about what a good vibe yeah. there was around here. They brought as, their grandchild and they just felt it was a good feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, 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 I, you know, and I heard similar sentiments uh, 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 all through the day, you know, and despite the fact that we were under the constant threat of downpours that eventually came our way, everybody uh, was uh, in the right spirit yesterday to deal with all of this. And, you know, we're still having people out front who are coming and checking out the stuff that's on the curb. Um, and uh, so, again, finally, again, thank you very much. We are kind of entering into now our summer season here at East Church, and, <clears throat> and which means it's going to be uh, we're going to be here every Sunday. Uh, I'm going to be taking a little bit of vacation in July and August, uh, but um, every Sunday will be something a little bit different. And for now, we are continuing on with our Wednesday Bible study series about the 50 plus great passages of the Bible. We ended up having to cancel last week, but we are going to meet this Wednesday. We're going to take up the passage that we were going to do last week, I think from 2 Chronicles. And, uh, and I hope that you will join us. By the way, and if you're feeling uh, uh, like this is, we're having such a good time, not only if you're not there, why not? Come on, come and join us. Also, if you are there and would like to invite someone to share in that, I think that's a wonderful opportunity, a great entry point uh, for someone who maybe like to, to share in, the, in our conversation and our fun at that Bible study. Also, finally, just uh, I want to, uh, a couple of you already know about this, and, and I want to just let you know that our plan is to have a reception of New Covenant members here at the church at the end of the month, I think on the 25th, and uh, if that uh, works out. And so if you are not formally a member of East Church, any of you online and elsewhere would like to join with our congregation, please be in touch with me, and we'll see what we can do to make that happen. Any other announcements this morning? Women's Fellowship. The last one of the season, two on Wednesday. Two o'clock Wednesday, Women's yeah, Fellowship. An ice cream social, so come. An ice cream social. You're not going to make them pack up boxes or anything like that. Well, 
Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Ice cream social. Come for the ice cream social and stay for the fellowship. So, anybody else? Yes, Chris. I did want to note that uh, my table sold two hundred dollars worth of uh, models, oh. and, but the most amazing part of that was in one sale, one gentleman bought a hundred and fifteen dollars worth. He, he liked the models, and he just said, I want this one, and I want this one. There you go. you got to set up a, a, a kiosk somewhere in the mall. You could, you could really clean up <laughs> with all that. Thank you very much, Chris. Not only because of uh, being there and being a great salesperson for that, but he builds all those things, and, uh, and he, you have a good time doing it. So uh, thank you for uh, sharing the, this joy with the rest of us. All right then, friends, we are going to close out this morning having our choir come forward and they are going to lead all of us in an anthem, the words of which are printed in your bulletin. Please be bold and sing. serving God, and being a blessing for God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen.